Hello everybody, welcome to my studio, George Cole here in Loveland, Colorado. We are starting part one of a three-part series, I hope. If not, we'll go to a four-part. But this three-part series is painting uh, the log jam in um, uh, Jenny Lake or String Lake up in uh, Teton National Park. One of my most favorite places to paint and I hope you can get up there and do some plein air painting. Some of the best times of my um, uh, summers is to get up there and paint. But because of COVID and it's winter time, we're here in the studio. And what I'm providing for you are ongoing weekly lessons, start to finish on these uh, paintings. So that's what you get. And that's how I learned. With my first teacher, it took me uh, three and a half years with her. I, I hope you're not as slow as I was. Hope you can do it quicker. But uh, I would either stand to the right or the left of her, watch what she mixed and where she put it on. Didn't make a lot of sense till I got more experience. So with that, that's what I'm providing to you as we go forward. So week by week, keep painting and you will see you'll get better. I'd like to give you critiques. If not, Please find somebody in your community that you would trust to do good critiques for you and uh, that builds you up, doesn't tear you down, but is honest enough to tell you some techniques of what you're overlooking. Um, subscribe to this uh, channel and give me some feedback. Subscribe's down there in the lower, lower right. Click that subscribe button and please give me your comments. I really appreciate and uh, benefit from your insights and comments. Uh, so, I ask you to do that uh, uh, in the comment section below. So, with that, enough said, enough, you don't have to look at me anymore. Let's take and jump into the painting. Thanks for coming by. All right, bye bye. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to part one of um, String Lake Outlet, I believe, up in Teton National Park. Um, we're continuing on with the adventures of a limited palette. So if you can see from the overhead camera, I have three basic colors. I have blue, red, yellow, and I have a couple mixers. I have a Naples and a, a cold gray, as well as white. That's a total of six colors down from 19. So uh, this is a big step for me also and uh, we'll continue on to see how this goes. I might, as the future goes, add a few others, few others um, but for now I'm going to try to be as di disciplined as I can to uh, stick with these originals. Here's my brushes that I'm going to be using. I'm using a 10, uh, 6 or an 8, uh, 4 and a 2, and then this old worn out scrubber. So let me get rid of these guys. I also have my palette knives, I have my turp, my odorless turp to the right, I have my paper towels underneath, and I'm ready to get started, and I'm pumped to paint this because I really, really like this part of the country. Okay, we started about five minutes after, so I can extend this a little bit longer so I can keep track of what I'm doing here. So, I'm going to start with my scrubber. And uh, this image can be found on my website, georgecallgreatart.com, and uh, for a minimal fee. Um, so what I really try to do uh, with every painting that I have is figure out, can I found a, find a foundation line? And what I'm going to be using is this water top of the pond right here as my foundation line. It's about one-third below and I have two-thirds above. So I'm going to mix a blue, ultra, and a gray. And I'm going to add some white. Got too much blue in there. Now I've grayed it down. And I want to make sure I make enough of it. I don't know why I'm using my brush. Let me use it. There we go. This will... Using your palette knife is a good way to mix paints. I 
I get so much in a rush sometimes I paint, I, I mix with my brush and you'll see me do that a lot today. So I want to go down to the lower third. And I, I know a lot of people say, I'm not an artist because I can't even draw a straight line. And as you can see, I can't even draw a straight line. So it's not a requirement to be a good artist. But I think it's in the general spot. However, I think when I stood back, this went up on one side, so I want to bring it down just a little bit. The way you can measure it is go with your paintbrush, go one, two. Close enough. This first part of the painting, I'm using, draw, uh, I'm using some lines to figure out where these shapes should be. So let me build up from this. I see some bushes to the left. See a big tree right here? I don't know if I'll put him in or not. I'll make that decision later. I see some bushes and trees on the other side. Kind of like, like that. This will be trees. This will be bushes. Tree. Then I see a foreground hill, and then I see the background hill. And I think I'm going to chop off the top of that thing. I want to have the mountains go off. And now I'm going to put in the foreground hills. I think there's two of them. And these are just my foundation lines. Maybe they're not. It's all one hill. And those are my foundation lines. Next I want to try to figure out, get some volume in there. The other thing I'm paying attention to is my, my canvas is a little more square. This is a little bit more horizontal. So I have to kind of do some of those changes in my, uh, my brain. There's another level of water back there, so I'm going to erase this. This is going to make it look like it's going back. And I think this comes forward just a little bit. And this is a little angle just a little bit too. Now up in here is going to be a bunch of logs. This is going to be the log jam up in here. As you can see, I took this photograph in low light up in the Tetons. It's one of the most beautiful places I think to paint in the world for me. But uh, let me let me make some blue, a little bit of red, a little bit of gray, and some yellow. I'm making a very dark, rich green. This is where I wish I had some burnt sienna in this mixture. I need to make that a little darker. I added some red. Ooh, that did the trick. Now you see why this thing is such a worn out brush because I scrub with it so much. I call it a scrubber. When I put in the, the values, I start getting a better sense of 
the volume and how these values are working together. I'm, I'm taking my first stab at a value. I'm going to use some of this over here with this tree going up here. I think there's some, a couple other pines over here. That's how I make pine trees. I think there's some darks along here too. Oop. There's some darks along the base here. The value of this water and these are very close together. So I'm just going to mix a little gray in there as you can see from the overhead. I just dipped some of my dark green into the gray. I need to get a little thinness in there, so I added some turp. And this is how you ruin a brush. And then down here is a lot more, so I'm going to use a bigger brush to fill that in. Now, as I go back, I want these to be lighter and bluer back here. And there's a tree design back here, too. I think I have a drawing error first. Let me... I think this comes in a little higher. Oop, get the gray in there, dude. Not the green. And this is the higher part. So I'm going to add more gray to that mixture. And some turp. Oh, I lost it. I made it too light. So I'm going to add some more blue, red, yellow, and gray. Let's see if this is lighter. Too dark. I'm adding more white and gray to it. And let me see what I can do here. Okay, the value here is lighter than this value. And that's what I was doing here on my, my palette. And this back here looks like it's even lighter than this, so I'll add more white to this mixture. You might be saying that guy sure goes after a canvas like he's got a chisel in his hand. Anyway, it's the first part of the painting. Be loose. Don't get too serious about it. Okay, up here we're going to have snow and um, a lighter gray. So, I'm going to add some white to this mixture. And I just want one basic value back there. So I'm using my knife. I'm making a pretty good mixture. I'm going to go to a bigger brush, and this is such a good brush, I'm going to take good care of it and I'm not going to scrub with it. It's my $9 brush. Now let me check the value. Okay, I think the value is okay. So in other words, darker, medium, light, light up here. Now this is not a time to get into detail. I think this even goes a little higher. Just made a correction there. See, when you get into volume, you can say, oh, that's not right, that's right. I 
I'm going to make this uh, cliff a little darker. I just got some of my darker gray in there. I'm making it darker because it's a vertical. Now I'm going back to light and I'm making some drawing changes as I speak because once I get my volume and I can see where my mistakes are. Now, I learned some very good techniques from other artists as I was maturing in my trade and uh, Dan Young always said, work these problems out on a sketch pad and I tried that very hard but I'm so impulsive it never worked out for me, so I work it out on my canvas because I can, I put the paint on thin and even when I was using those drawings, I still made mistakes all the time and I was making changes. So I said, just go to the canvas. Now, so do, don't do what I do, do what I say. Get some good techniques here. Now, I know that there's a lighter hill back here that's even lighter, so this is my paper towel. And so this is lighter than that. And this seems to be lighter too. And I'm going to lighten that. Oh, boy did I screw you guys up. I hit my zoom camera guys, sorry about that. Everything looks still aligned, thank you. Okay, so what we're doing on this first part is block in, and what we want to do is get paint all over this canvas. I want to make a uh, work on these uh, foregrounds here. So I'm going to do some blue and some yellow and some Naples, just a touch of gray. Here I am mixing with my brush. Bad. And it's more subdued green. See, it's a gray green. Oh, I should have used this back in here. This is a brighter green up here. So I'm going to use this green that I just made. Again, there's, I've got some turpin here. It's thin. And I'm going to put that in here. So it's a gray green. Use some blue, uh, lemon yellow, Naples, white. I think there's some over here too. So what I'm getting, and what I'm getting more with my limited palette, is more color harmony. And it goes well with these subdued, uh, overcast um, paintings. I'm getting some feedback from my one of my cameras that I have for my Zoom students and I have to figure that out so I'm sorry for the feedback noise that's coming in of hearing me twice. I think I need to reestablish some dark I have back in here. Blue, gray, blue, gray mixture. Ooh, that's nice. I like that. And I think there's some coming up in here too. I didn't make it as dark, darn it. Did it. Oh, too dark. Okay, now we're in the neighborhood. So I broke up that big green space there. I'm always uh, paying attention when I have these uh, spaces that are so big, I need to do something inside of it. Like this one here has a lot of little trees in it. And before the end of this painting, I'll be getting some darks like that in there. But let me.
get some of these things filled in here a little bit. Darn it. I'm going to make these a little bit darker on the lake here, but not as dark as I just mixed. And a little bit of red in there. Let's see what we got. Good. Up here I want to make that green a little brighter. Again, as you can tell, this is not my time for detail. Detail comes at the end. This is foundation. All this impressionistic painting has to do with foundation. Big shapes. Get them worked out. So I'm making a, a green with a little bit more zing to it. So I added more uh, lemon. I added some Naples and some blue. And you can see that this green has a little bit more zing to it. And I think there's some along here too. So this looks different than the green in the back. These are willows, I guess. Every time I do one of these paintings of um, up in the Tetons, I've been up to the Tetons a couple times with my good friend Ken Thiessen from Illinois. He's such a good painter and uh, fun to paint with. And uh, we give each other such a hard time, but it's Need to paint with your friends and remember those painting trips. And some of these darks come right down to the water. So I'm filling in some of these lights that I have here. Because I want a block in before the end of this painting. And I just put in some darker blue-gray to even break, make these guys a little darker up in front. Maybe a little too dark, so I'll lighten them up. Let me throw some red in there and some yellow ochre and some, some lemon. There we go. Good, subtle, subtle dark. Green. Love it. And these guys are a little sparse. Let me get them going. Now, I see down here a two tone. I see a, the rocks underneath and the dark. So what I'm going to do is uh, work on the uh, uh, dark first. And we will get the uh, stones in later. So I have all this mixing area and with all this thin paint. So I'm going to pick it up, move it off to one side, see if I can use it later. And then I'm going to run my razor blade over this sucker. and get ready for the mixture of the water. Now before I get into that I want to ask the Zoom students if anybody has any questions from Zooming. Please unmute and give me the question that you have. Yeah, George, looking good. Thank you Ralph, appreciate it. Alright, for mixture, I want to use my knife. I want to get some gray, some blue, some uh, lemon. And I hope I have enough. 
So let me make some more. All right, that's my mixture. And let me get this I'm working with my number 10. I know a lot of this blocking seems like painting by numbers. But we want to just work with color harmony and how they're looking together, what's dark, what's light. As things go back, they get lighter. I think I need more gray in that mixture. There we go. I'm leaving uh, this center area for logs, so I'm not going to cover it in this area right here. Now these are oil paints and they'll still be tacky tomorrow when we work on it, but due to the fact that I have a lot of turp in here, it, it'll be a little bit more tacky than if it was thicker paint. So I'm just going to get this area in right here and I'll do some cross stitching here. Get some of this back in here. Now I'm going to thin this down just a little bit, paper towel it, and that's my base color. All right, I'm not going to do the sky right now. I don't know how my time's doing. I got time, so let me see about mixing up a nice gray on that. A really, really light, light gray. I'm going to pick up my green. I'm going to move it over. See if I can use it later. Again, I like to work on glass because you can clean it up. Can't always do this when I'm plein air painting because I'm working on a plastic palette. So I'm going to get a hunk of white, just a touch of Naples, and a touch of gray, and a lot of white. So it's a warm gray. And I didn't make enough of it. Now you all, I'm hoping we can get this done in three sessions, but I don't know, it's a pretty big painting. We might have to go into Thursday on this. And if that's the case, I'll reserve another Zoom spot for you Zoomers. I'm going to warm that, I'm gray that down a little bit more. I think I've got it. So I have more gray in here than I have maples. I'm going to use the same brush and it's not very clean so it might pick up some of that green that I had in it previously. And I added some turp and here we go. So at this point, called block in, you can kind of tell it's telling the story already. It's you've got these dark trees in front and then things go back. And that's what I want to accomplish at this point of the painting. I think I need to bring this in here. Made a drawing change here. And then this goes down a little bit more than what I have. And it goes up. If I may, 
I think I have a little bit of time. I'm going to go to, um, looks like a number four flat. And I'm going to get a snow design in there. I know, you're saying, that's detail. Well, let's get some in. This is pure white. I love this snow design here. I think this is a July shot, so there's snow up there, that's for sure. And then there's a little bit up in here. I just want to get the big boys in first. And then there's some up in this area. And what these do, it just kind of tells you the shape. The, the snow tells you where the verticals are and what's flat and what isn't. The snow is going to be the lightest color value in this painting. I have a drawing uh, value error. This should not be so dark, so I'm mixing up some lighter gray for here. Because it's a horizontal, verticals are darker. Just like pine trees are darker. Alrighty, so let's, since we've got some gray and some white, I'm going to put some in here. And you say, well, how are we going to get all those logs to make it look like logs? We're not going to do it today. We just want to get the values in here right. And I think I need thicker here and thinner here. So let me get some more green over here. And I want to make this thin, so I'll thin it down a little bit. And let me make a dark. And I think there's a nice edge right here I want to put in with my knife. Oop. It's got to be flat, George. There we go. All right, so for today, that's where we're at. So what I've done is to cover up the whole canvas with uh, value and color. We started with lines, then we did a um, value composition block in, and that's what we've done. So this is our darkest darks are here, gets lighter and medium, medium, lighter, lighter, as we go up above. So I hope you YouTubers tune in tomorrow. We'll get in part two of this painting. Part two will be balance. We're going to be saying, are these values correct? Does this need to be darker, lighter? Does this color need more intensity? That's the main purpose of tomorrow. We're still not, we'll get into a little bit of um, uh, detail tomorrow, but basically we're really going to strengthen these things to really have some punch. We want um, um, this to have a nice uh, story coming in here. We'll work on the logs and uh, uh, clean up these mountains a little bit so they say a little bit more. This has been, you know, I look at this right now and I really like the start we've done today. And it's working okay. So I'm happy with it. So with that, um, you Zoomers can stay tuned and we'll uh, uh, discuss any questions that you have. And um, otherwise,
Let's call it quits for uh, YouTube. And thanks so much for coming by. I appreciate it. Thank you so very, very much. Goodbye.